Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gulp. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to watch pretty much any file in our working directory. If you remember the last video I asked you to do a little homework and just create some uh, watch options, some tasks, in order to let Gulp recognize every time we update a file and it doesn't matter what type of file we want to update. It can be an HTML file, a PHP file or whatever other type of file you're working on. Did you do that? If you didn't, no worries, I'm gonna show you how to do it and I'm gonna show you also another super cool trick of browser sync. So if we scroll down here in the list of variables that we declared, we declare a bunch of watch variables, so JS watch or the style watch and basically what we're doing, we're simply storing the location of the files that we wanna watch and then in the last task that we define, the watch task, we're saying to Gulp, hey, watch this file and if, if this file changes, something happens to this type of file, trigger something. In our case, we trigger the task and then the reload of the browser. That's exactly what we have to do. We need to define the files that we want to watch and then uh, we need to tell Gulp what to do when these files change. So let's do it. For example, we have our index.html here and in my index.html I have written Gulp tutorial 2. So let's say for example that I want to watch all the HTML files that I have in my working directory. I can simply say var, define a var, in my case I want to call it HTML watch, but you can call it however you want. At this var it's gonna basically contain all the files in all the folders and all directories that ends with the HTML extension. That's it. And of course, we can do exactly the same for PHP files. So we could have a variable called PHP watch and have all the folders with double star, then forward slash star period extension of the file, PHP. Now that we have these two variables, we don't need to create any task. We need to just extend the watch task that we have at the end. So we can say gulp.watch a, whenever the HTML watch variable changes or you recognize that those files that I store in there are changing, just simply trigger the reload option. And in the previous lesson we stored inside the reload variable the browser sync reload option. That's perfect. We can do exactly the same for the PHP watch. Done. Now if we open our terminal and we trigger once again gulp watch, Automatically our browser sync will get triggered and our URL will be available. So if we access our browser, we refresh connected to browser sync. Perfect. Now let's do a little test. Let's shrink this down here and let's shrink the code editor as well. Perfect. Let's open our index.html. I change gold tutorial. I remove the two, save. Automatically, the browser reloaded by itself. I didn't have to do anything. So, reload this, save. Automatically, the browser reloads because it recognizes a change in, in the HTML file and browser sync reloads our file automatically. That's perfect. So this is good if I'm doing some edits that require some uh, reloading or the actual physical reload of the page. But if I'm doing something that it doesn't really require the reloading of the page, I want to have the ability for browser sync to just inject those changes and not reload the page. Because sometimes I could potentially work on something like a form submission or I have some data and I don't want the page to reload constantly every time I change something. Let's access the gold file.js. We have our gulp watch style watch and here we're triggering the style. Well, let's remove the reload completely. We're gonna say basically if the style changes, don't reload the page but simply trigger the style task. In the style task, we have right at the end of the execution of the style task, these browser sync stream piped in the execution of all our options. That means whatever change we do in the distribution file is gonna get streamed inside browser sync. And in the previous lesson, we set up also inside the browser sync, the inject changes set to through. This is really important because this will allow us to change stuff and inject the changes without reloading the page. 
let me show you what I mean. Let's access the terminal again. Let's interrupt the script of Gulp Watch and let's trigger it again. Every time we update our Gulp file, we have to trigger again the Gulp Watch and then just leave it running. Perfect. Let's reload this page so we know that connected to browser sync, everything is working. Awesome. Now I access the variable .scss and I change the background to 000 black and I save it. Automatically, the page changed, the style was changed without reloading the page. And just to be sure that the page wasn't actually reloaded, let me do something that otherwise it wouldn't work with the page reload. So if I actually edit this HTML, and if I say go tutorial, no reloading here, this is something that I wrote inside the element. And if you know a little bit about the inspector, how it works, all the edits that you do in the inspector, if you reload this page, the inspector will lose all the edits because these are just temporary edits. But if I change this thing, F55, for example, let's put it red and if I save it, my updates were pushed to just just the style is getting actually the version of from browser sync without reloading the page. So I can go back here to have like completely white text and this gets updated without actually reloading the page. And this is fantastic. So this was a super quick tutorial about Gulp, how to watch pretty much every file and how to inject CSS updates without reloading the page. That's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.